John was my classmate. When we were in grade 7, he told me that he prayed to Jesus for help in the exam. When I told him that I prayed to Buddha for help, he said that Jesus was more powerful than Buddha because his exam results were better than mine. In grade 11, after we studied biology and Darwin's theory of evolution, John became an atheist. By then, my exam results had surpassed his, not due to my improvement, but due to his decline. So I asked him if his results declined because he stopped praying to Jesus. He said, don't be absurd, religion is false. One weekend for a school project, we visited an orphanage located near a Buddhist temple. When we passed by the temple, we saw a group of monks in saffron robes. They were chanting Buddhist mantras. John mocked the monks by imitating their chanting. I shushed him and said, Don't mock what you don't understand. He replied, Don't you think they sound funny? He asked, One day you will suffer and embrace Buddhism. I said, Is that a curse or blessing? He asked, You decide. I said, John and I lost touch after we graduated from high school. Ten years later, at our school reunion, we reconnected. John pulled me aside and said, Your words came true. What words? I asked. I suffered and embraced Buddhism to overcome my suffering, he said. I recalled what I had said to him and listened as he told me his story. After getting a degree in economics, John started work in the finance industry. He was ambitious, always looking for ways to make more money. Soon, he became a commodity trader for an investment bank. The money was good, but the job was stressful. After work, he would join a few of his colleagues for some drinks. The harder he worked and more money he made, he felt he deserved to spend more money on harder drinks. From being a social drinker, he became an alcoholic, drinking every day, even when he was alone. His addiction caused him to lose focus on his work. He became negligent and non-compliant in his trades. His boss fired him. He was incapable of finding a new job. Being drunk most of the time, his money ran out. The burden of paying for home mortgage and expenses fell on his wife, whose income couldn't support their lifestyle. He often quarreled with his wife, who eventually left him. Then the bank repossessed his home, and he moved to stay with his parents. At this lowest point in his life, a friend introduced him to Buddhist meditation. The practice enhanced his consciousness and helped him gain self-control, stop his addiction, and transform his life. Today, John feels blessed to be a Buddhist and has replaced his toxic addiction to alcohol with the pure pleasure of meditation. Via a support group for former alcoholics, John befriended Matthew. While John turned to Buddhism, Matthew turned to Christianity to overcome alcoholism. While John had previously mocked Buddhism by imitating the chanting of Buddhist monks, Matthew had previously mocked Christianity by asking, if Jesus couldn't save himself from getting nailed to the cross, isn't it foolish to think he'll save you? Therefore, the moral of the story is, if you mock a religion, you eventually encounter a problem whose solution is the religion. Whatever your belief, whether you're an atheist, Buddhist, or Christian, don't be smug, arrogant, or egotistic. Be strong in your faith, but don't assume that your belief or religion is the only way, the only truth, or the only solution. If people drop their pride and aren't prejudiced against other beliefs and religions, the world will be much more peaceful and harmonious.